Am I audible, sir? Yes. Good. Good evening, one and all. I am Himanshu Saraja of Teakers. Today we have between us Mr. Raja Gopalan, who has pursued bachelor's in industrial engineering and Lean Six Sigma Master Plan. He has also he has a specialization in total quality management, data analysis for research and publication from one of the most eminent institute of India, IIT Roorkee. Also have 25 years experience in India Air Indian Air Force, United Nations MSM Quality Management System, and many more. He has been the founder of uh, founder and director of 41st and a uh, training consultancy organization for operational excellence strategies for industry. He has trained more than thousand green and black belt students and has provided. Guidance in Six Sigma quality improvement projects nearly saving hundred crores. He has given training of Six Sigma black belt training for seventeen officers of Indian Air Force at the Training Command, Bangalore. Mr. Raja Gopalan has also been empaneled for Lean Six Sigma manufacturing, lean, lean manufacturing and Six Sigma strategies from National Productivity Council, Quality Control of India, Quality Council of India. In the field of lean manufacturing competitiveness schemes (LCMS) by MSME Government of India, I would lastly conclude exp expressing my heartiest gratitude to him for giving all of the students present here his valuable time out of his busy schedule, pouring out his immense uh, knowledge and experience among, among us all of us. Thank you so much, sir, for giving your precious time to the students. Thank you, Manshu. Shall I start? Yes, sir. Good evening, all students. Hello. Good, Good evening, evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening sir. sir. Right. Good evening, Good evening sir. sir. Right. Good evening. So, uh, let us start. So, before starting, I request all of you because this is, I think, uh, my fifth program. So, I have been repeating the same thing for almost five times. So, I request all of you to go through my previous recordings. Okay. And uh, now I am going to cover only the main main topics. Okay, so please take out time and go to the previous recording, and uh, uh, you can come back to me for any doubts, etc. Okay, so let's uh, discuss only the main main points. Uh, so let me present now. Okay, so what do you know about Six Sigma? Yes, please uh, give some ideas. What you have heard about Six Sigma? What do you know about Six Sigma? Just give me some idea. So it should be a, you know, in a participative mode. Okay. Yeah, please. Who can tell me what is Six Sigma? Sir, may I? Yes, yes, please. <laughs> Uh, so lean six sigma is like a methodology. Okay. We have to we have to uh, manage our uh, manage our our finding our some faults in the plants, mm -hmm. and we have to manage our uh, costs of the plant production. Good. Okay. So you have some awareness. Okay. Anybody else? Your my voice is not. You are not audible. Um, it's for uh, it's a method that we can use to improve any process, make it uh, most um, effective. Very good. Okay, then. Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, Lean Six Sigma is a tool in which uh, we try to improve the uh, customer satisfaction and the productivity rate. Okay. In effective. Very good. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, yes, sir. There is a process like DMET in which we have to complete all the things. Very good. 
Good, good. So you are already aware about a Six Sigma a little bit. Okay. Now somebody talked about improve. Okay, improve. So let me start from that. There are two functions for main uh, you know, challenges for any organization. The challenge is to maintain and to transform. Maintain and improve. Improve or we can say transform. Okay. So both are right. So there are two big challenges for um, you know, any organization, whether it is small organization, big organization, is it a manufacturing organization, is it a service organization, small, big, local, global, whatever it may be. Every company faces a challenge and basically to maintain these two requirements. There are two requirements. One is to maintain and the other one is to improve. Now, when you say maintain, what do you mean by maintain? Maintain means you have to maintain your production, maybe your production, your sales, your profit, customer relationship, uh, sales, profit, then customer relationships and all kinds of your day to day activities. When you complete your chemical engineering, you may be going, somebody may be going for a job, somebody may be starting their own business, whatever it may be. So when you go to a, any organization, you will see that the, every org, you have to do a lot of day-to-day -day activities that you will be uh, you know, uh, under a system and there will be a lot of uh, processes, activities that you have to do in a day-to-day -day manner. Now, this is one part, the maintain part. Now, there is another important part called improve or transform. Now, most of the people, 99% of the organization or the resources of the organization are involved in this, this area only, maintain. Means maintaining their day-to-day -day activities. Whatever job they are assigned into, they do that. But very few people, few people are there here to improve the transform. Transform means you observe what are the problems in your process and try to improve it. Improve the process, improve the system. Now, not all can do this. Only few can do is now Six Sigma is a strategy. Somebody said a methodology. Somebody said strategy. Now Six Sigma is a strategy for this, for improving this, improving or transforming. Now when I when I say organization has two roles or uh, two challenges that they need to balance these two challenges. Similarly, every manager or a working professional also has this problem. Everyone has this. Even you also have this. You also have to maintain. What are the things you are maintaining things? When you are going for study, you have to maintain your attendance. You have to maintain your studies, um, your uh, assignments, uh, your uh, scores, etc. You have to maintain, isn't it? At the same time, you also have to improve and transform. Now, what is the purpose of today you are attending this? Is it this maintain purpose or improve purpose? Transform purpose. Improve purpose. Isn't it? Transform. Yeah. Transforming yourself, improving yourself. Isn't it? Now, every organization has this role. Similarly, every person has this role. Now, any, any student who is only focusing his studies, only focusing his grade, he cannot improve. Isn't it? In order to remain competitive in the job market, you have to maintain your scores, you have to maintain your studies, and also you have to improve. Now, Six Sigma is one way of improving their process business for an organization. Now, as a working professional for you, what is Six Sigma? Six Sigma teaches you how to identify, as somebody said, identifying a problem. Isn't it a problem? Solving a problem using the mic methodology. Now, Six Sigma is this. Six Sigma is a methodology. Six Sigma is a metric. We'll discuss that. Now, understand why organization use Six Sigma. Organization use Six Sigma for this purpose. Because if they are not maintaining, improving continuously, they are not going to exist in another decade. Only those company who is balancing this maintain and improve activity have been existing last decade and they are going to exist in another decade also. You can see many companies if, uh, if you go for 2005, 6, Nokia was the biggest company was providing smartphone, you know, mobile phones. And, uh, and another three, four years, they were nowhere. Why they never try to improve or transform their product, service, processes, etc. Okay. 
so this is a must and only those nowadays it is must every company you can see in four or five years some new company is coming and taking over like anything so see toyota was once upon a time the global leaders but then then tesla came and uh, tesla overtook uh, toyota you know they have raised uh, almost trillion uh, dollars near to apple like that okay so that is why we need a strategy every organization need a strategy for improvement six sigma is one strategy for improvement many other strategies are there for six sigma is best strategy for improving processes systems etc okay now before coming to the topic let us just discuss a historical perspective of six sigma origins of six sigma so when you trace the origins of six sigma we can trace the origins of six sigma before 1700 when i say before 1700 what was that it was before the industrial revolution so what kind of manufacturing or service or business activities happening before industrial revolution it was named as craft manufacturing what was the specialty of craft manufacturing in craft manufacturing a craftsman in a village maybe a, a potter maybe a uh, a carpenter uh, you know who makes furniture let's say or somebody who makes clothes so uh, let's take a furniture example of a furniture if i want a furniture i will go to a carpenter or a manufacturer somebody who is making furniture i will ask some design and then keep and i will ask one or two furnitures volume less volume and i variety somebody else will come and totally entirely different design so the specialty here was high variety of product everybody demanded different different high variety high variety of product and low volume okay but what was the other specialties quality for example the design the manufacturing the marketing the sales uh, uh, quality everything was done by one person okay and it was there was a face to face interaction between the producer and the uh, consumer so quality was they everybody believed in quality they know if i am not maintaining quality they will not come back to me so this was craft manufacturing before 1700 then what happened after 1700s 1700 to 1900 mass manufacturing industrial revolution took place in europe now they became uh, their uh, you know uh, uh, huge factory built built up and then uh, some area became in, uh, industrialized uh, it became an industrial area and then what happened these people started shifting now uh, when when the, the mass manufacturing came the prices reduced and lot of products available then slowly slowly the traditional uh, uh, the um, you know traditional manufacturing got affected even india we got affected we were once a mom uh, once upon a time uh, some uh, the, in, during 1700s we were famous exporters for the you know clothing materials then all of a sudden this mass manufacturing happened and uh, you know we the our craftsmen suffered there were lot of uh, job loss or um, economy loss etc and then when the industrial revolution started and industries uh, industrial area built up these people start started moving to the industrial area and they became the factory workers the craftsmen once upon a time they became factory workers now what happened people were focusing only mass manufacturing production only then uh, nobody took care of quality why because there is no face to face contact with the producer somebody who is producing and who is selling or who is consuming now slowly slowly the quality affected and quality you know took at the back seat and we also call this era as industry 0.0 and then came next era that was world war 2 and world war 2 was a very important uh, era why because most of the statistical quality control happened here now here what happens when uh, <coughs> sorry when they realize that quality is stay affected there are there were many many quality initiative started uh, you know uh, adopting people started adopting quality initiative like uh, uh, first thing was inspection the first thing in quality came was quality inspection where people will do uh, uh, the producers manufacturers produce and there is a quality inspector they come and check and it was a cat and mouse game okay then later they realized 
quality inspection itself is not enough. We need quality control. Later, quality control key. Then people realize quality control is also not enough. We need quality assurance, then quality management, then total quality management. Likewise, it happened. Okay. So the SQC part came here. Most of the SQC parts. So SQC means statistical quality control. Why? Because most of the time it used to have an 100% inspection. But 100% inspection is not possible in some, some products like uh, weapons and uh, bullets. If you cannot do an 100% inspection, if you are doing 100% inspection, that means you are destroying the product. So there comes the need of statistical quality control. Statistical quality control means you take a, a batch from the from population and you check the, the batch and then you decide whether that batch is good or not. So this is a system is known as SQC. Now SQC, uh, the main person who actually developed all the SQC techniques are Walter Schuart. Walter Schuart he is spelled as Walter Schuart. Uh, Schuart was a person he was also known as father of statistical quality control and control charts, etc. He came out with this concept like quality control, then uh, then uh, what do you say, this uh, control charts, etc. You must have heard about control charts. Schwartz was the person first started that control chart. He was the person who said that plus minus three sigma is the, uh, is the place where you need your process need control. Now, uh, there was other two gentlemen called Dr. Deming and Dr. Juran. They also realized this SQC is very good. So Schwartz SQC was uh, literally taken by Dr. Deming, another uh, quality guru. Okay. Now during 1945 to 18, what happens after the World War? Japan was totally shattered, and Japan was uh, famous for their shabby products. Now Japan realized that if they want to come back from the economy, they have to focus on quality. Now, what happened after the uh, American war, America actually helped Japan to rebuild also. Now, Americans uh, sent uh, Dr. Deming to Japan. Dr. Deming, uh, Deming was working in U.S. Department of Agriculture, USDA. Now, Deming was sent to uh, Japan to study about agriculture and uh, development of the country. Uh, Deming was using this, uh, even in uh, uh, agriculture, Deming was using this short statistical quality control, etc. Now, Deming realized that this is the need of ours as quality uh, should be focused. And uh, he came and met one of the uh, founding members of Jews. Jews means Japanese Union of Scientists and Engineers. So one uh, Mr. Uh, Koyanagi, Koyanagi was the founding members and he met Deming and Deming convinced him that you need to have statistical quality control trainings. And then Jews arranged a lot of training of Deming's training about SQC. And then in another five years, five years, Japan became the world leaders in quality. Japan product uh, was very famous then that they were uh, no, so, uh, now we know that Japanese product or how quality products they produce. So a lot of techniques came in Japan during that time, SPC, SQC, TQM, etc. We may call this era as industry 2.0. And then uh, Japanese uh, respected Deming by giving him a uh, Deming award in 1951. 1951, the Japanese kept an award called the Ming Award, and till 1997, it was kept for only Japanese industries. And then uh, later, 1997, Japanese opened it to the world, and uh, we should be proud that the first come first nation to win that the Ming Award, other than a Japanese um, uh, industry, is our Indian company uh, TVS. TVS won the first the Ming Award in 1997. So this was the you know uh, things happening in the 1945 to 1980s. Then what happens when Japan uh, and during this period uh, there evolved uh, the concepts called lean etc. Lean manufacturing. Now 18, 1980s to 2010 what happened? Uh, the, the Japanese uh, you no know, I virtually captured all markets Europe, uh, America etc. Now, people realize that quality is a competitive strategy, that they have to focus on quality. Quality can bring them sales, quality can bring them profit, etc. They have realized. 
then lot of quality initiative took place now what happens in motorola motorola was a company and they were facing this competition from japanese industries then they realized that uh, they have to focus on quality now they started that bob galvin was the ceo he gave a, a very high challenging goal to motorola like uh, 10x in 5 years every 5 years they will uh, they will uh, you know uh, grow by 10 times and then uh, that time this six sigma concept evolved in motorola during 1987 etc so then onwards lean six Sig lean management six sigma continual improvement etc iso 9000 also came during this period uh, so lot of lot of initiative came in this period so we also call this at in industry 3.0 now where are we now now we are in industry 4 now in the industry 4 uh, there are going to be lot of changes like artificial intelligence machine learning now machine and machine can communicate machine and man can communicate so data speed data accuracy efficiency is going to increase now there is a huge role for six sigma professional because everything is about data and six sigma professionals know how to handle data there is going to be a huge demand for the six sigma professionals here in this next decade so that's why i am uh, we are conducting this certification program regularly we professionally certify people uh, working professionals we are uh, getting huge demand nowadays for six sigma certification there is a huge demand created for certification six sigma certification certified professionals so what is the specialty of in my industry for like uh, somebody said demic isn't it define measure analyze improve control so this demic phase with the uh, you know uh, uh, evolution of industry 4 this define and measure phase is going to be real time earlier this used to take at least two months one or two months when we when we take a project demic de define and measures uh, phases take lot of time now define and measure phases are going to be real time with industry 4 okay so this is just an introduction of uh, you know quality as well as origins of six sigma now let us understand now what is six sigma as i asked you so let's understand what is six sigma so we can have many different uh, definitions for six sigma but i will try to teach people always six sigma in three different context one is six sigma as a metric when you say metric means a capability cap, a capability measure of a capability a process capability so when you say when you say six sigma your process is six sigma capable that means that process is going to produce only 3.4 dpm or defects per million opportunities in other words uh, the same process will have 99.99966 percentage of accuracy now tell me if you are operating in 99% accuracy we consider 99 as very good isn't it so if you are operating in 99% of accuracy if you produce 100 products how many defects how many products will be going defect yes what is there one one what about if you are operating in 99% accuracy and you are producing 1 million what is 1 million how much is 1 million 10 lakh 10 lakh 10 lakhs so if you are producing in a accuracy is 99% what is the defects that you are going to produce in 1 uh, 1 million 10000 10000 10000 sir so you are going to make 10000 mistakes isn't it so tell me is 99 is good or bad according to industry it's not good not good isn't it so 99 uh, is not acceptable now once upon a time it was acceptable okay now earlier before motorola this uh, all this six sigma concept came it used to you know people used to talk about accuracy in percentage they say 99% they will become very happy but six sigma motorola said 99% is not the thing that we need to achieve we have to have different paradigm called dpmo defects per million opportunities dpmo now what is six sigma capable process dpmo
That means if you have one million opportunities, you will produce make only three point four defects in a million opportunity. Otherwise, the accuracy is ninety nine point nine 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 six six percentage accuracy. In the last session, I started the introduction with the Dabbawala's example. You can go through that lecture. Dabbawala's in Mumbai, maybe you know about Dabbawala's. Their accuracy is even more than this. Even more than this, even people are striving to achieve this accuracy. Even in this accuracy, people are not able to achieve. Now, this is six sigma capable. There are five sigma. Five sigma means DPMO will be around uh, 200, uh, 223, something like that. And four sigma means almost 6,000 DPMO. Now, normally people are operating in four sigma, three sigma or four sigma. Now, even achieving four sigma is difficult, and Dabbawalas, Mumbai Dabbawalas, even achieve more than six sigma, they are achieving. Imagine their accuracy. Okay, just go through that lecture, you will understand that. Okay, now this is the so we can say six sigma as a measure of capability. If you want a kind of accuracy, if you are looking for a kind of accuracy, look at keep the goal of six sigma capable process. Now, what is the normal yield for a chemical process? Generally, the chemical engineering, uh, they calculate, uh, calculate it in yield, isn't it? Normally, it used to be around 98% uh, and 90, uh, no, it's somewhere 98 to 99 percentage. So you can imagine what is the, you know, whether it is six sigma or four, three sigma, four sigma, etc. Okay, now we can say that six sigma is, when you ask what is six sigma, when I ask what is six sigma, you can say six sigma is a measure of capability. A six sigma process will have 99.99966 percentage of accuracy or doing things right. Or in other words, we can call it as 3.4 defects per million opportunities. And then Six Sigma is also a methodology. This is also someone said that Six Sigma is a methodology. Six Sigma's methodology means Six Sigma defines certain, uh, describes certain methodology of problem solving. If you have a problem in your organization, you can solve it in DMAIC. Now, whatever, when you learn Six Sigma means we are actually learning the DMAIC process. Now, green, yellow belts, yellow belt will learn overall methodology. And then yellow belt will learn some tools, not all advanced tools, only some tools they will learn. And uh, uh, black belt will have more tools. Actually, we are planning some, some internship also for your ASC students for a green and black belt combo. I don't know when you are going to plan it, but we have been trying it. So yellow belt will have uh, know about uh, uh, basic methodology plus little bit tools, small tools. So in Six Sigma is, in other words, Six Sigma, we can say Six Sigma is a methodology of problem solving. And there is another methodology, DFSS also. DFSS means design for Six Sigma. There are two methodologies. So when you're learning Six Sigma, that means you're learning these two methodologies. Now, every, these steps, DIFMAG step, define, measure, analyze, improve, control. In every steps, there are certain data we have to collect and there are certain tools that we have to so we can also say it's set of tools, lot of tools, set of tools, philosophy, data-driven approach, etc. Okay. So we can say Six Sigma, all of this, you can say Six Sigma is a methodology where your critical process, you try to achieve the accuracy of 3.4 DPMO using data and set of tools. Now here decides whether you are a black belt, you are a yellow belt, you are a black belt, you are a green belt, etc. This set of tools decides. Methodology, everybody learns. What is a methodology? Okay. So this is all about Six Sigma. And then there are different levels, as I said, yellow belts. Actually, when the Motorola started this, there were no such yellow belts. There were only green belt and black belts. Later, people created yellow belts, white belt, etc. But we don't give actually certification in yellow belt. We only give participation certificate because we mainly focus on green belt and black belts. And we are the one of the one among the uh, you know initiators in uh, India for certifications for green belt and black belt. 
a special exclusive certification exclusive certification means uh, no all other certification portals they are using only examinations but we are conducting training plus there are a lot of assignments there are a lot of projects that you have to do then there are uh, practice sessions uh, subjective objective sessions and then an exam so i can say one of the you know difficult uh, uh, certification process we are conducting so yellow belt means one who is trained in overall methodology and basic problem solving concepts green belt they are the real engine behind the six sigma projects they tackle almost 80 percent of the variation they will be there then every projects and then we have black belts what is the difference between green and black is a black belt will have more advanced uh, knowledge of advanced statistics plus he is a change agent he is a leader he leads at least four or five projects in a year and then comes master black belt sometimes you have in-house master black belt or an external master black belt the role of master black belt is to train people guide people and also guide the organization and then we have a project champion in the inside the organization that champion's role is to approve the project charter today we are going to learn the project charter approve the project charter and then uh, um, you know, allocating resources to uh, six sigma projects okay right so far is it okay so far you want to discuss anything hello are you there Yes, sir. Everything is going yes, good. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Everything is good. So, we can proceed. No discussion, yes, okay. Sure. Sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, we are discussing about a concept called Lean Six Sigma. Lean Six Sigma. Now, as I said, these both are two different strategies. Very recently, maybe uh, uh, by 10 years, a decade ago, now these, these were combined to call Lean Six Sigma. Actually, I was uh, one among the first to do this Lean Six Sigma program in 2007, Master Black Belt program. Since then, I have been training and uh, you know, consulting organizations. So Lean Six Sigma was uh, actually started uh, during uh, 2005 or six. Before that, there was no such program called Lean Six Sigma. Lean was separate, Six Sigma was separate. Now, these two concepts have combined together to call Lean Six Sigma. Now, these are two different strategies. Lean evolved in Japanese, Japan, uh, especially Japanese uh, auto industries and Toyota. Now, Six Sigma evolved in uh, Motorola and then Motorola. Uh, actually, Motorola started Six Sigma, but the real company that uh, made famous Six Sigma famous is GE. GE was a uh, Jack Welch was a person who actually world realized that uh, Six Sigma is going to give you a lot of improvements, a lot of financial benefit. So then later uh, during 2005, 2006, American Society of Quality combined these two the two techniques called Lean, and then they call it Lean Six Sigma. Now, the objective of Lean is to eliminate wastages and objective of Six Sigma is to eliminate variation. Now, who can say what is this wastages? Any idea about wastages? What is this wastage? Yes. Uh, maybe the process is not fast and consistent. Mm. Yes, you can say yes. Uh, the output we receive is combined of products for the consumers, mm -hmm. the byproducts, and the third thing is wastage. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. So we are talking about uh, the standard in terms of. Uh, we are talking about lean lean wastages. Okay. Yes. Anybody else? Defects, yes, defect is one of the wastages, yes. Then, okay, now in the lean strategy, there are eight kinds of wastages. So let me give you a small introduction of lean, what is lean. Now, what is the meaning of lean? What 
what is the meaning of lean and what is the opposite of lean can i say fat lean can be we can say a person is lean or thin and a person can be fat isn't it so we can call a fat person and a lean person isn't it so suppose if you uh, make a race you know uh, you conduct a race between a fat person and a lean person who is who is going to win the race generally lean person isn't it yes sir now for when you say fat person what is that fat fat in the belly he has fat isn't it so similarly every organization there is another example we say that uh, uh, suppose you are you, uh, you know you come in front of an elephant so if an elephant is chasing you suppose it is said that never run straight in front of an elephant if an elephant is chasing you never run straight what you have to do is you run like that run, run like this and all of a sudden take a sharp turn then take a sharp turn and then take a sharp turn now elephant what will happen elephant will chase you elephant will be run chasing you it will chase you and all of a sudden you take a sharp turn but elephant cannot take a sharp turn it will continue running like this so similarly take an example of uh, 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 take this analogy and uh, imagine that you are a company and you are chasing your customer means now everybody is chasing their customer everybody wants to catch their customer customer can run anywhere now customer runs like this nowadays customer is running like this see you have a customer and uh, suppose you have a uh, you are running a restaurant you uh, you uh, famous in that locality you got very good customers and you thought oh, everything is fine but all of a sudden somebody else started with better than you customer runs to him now what happens if you are stressed you know fat or you are traditional you will be keep on moving like this straight way like an elephant but customer has gone this way now you have to take it will take a lot of time to you to come here this has happened to many companies especially companies like nokia they thought they have customers and all of a sudden customer took and take a u turn and went to the apple and other smartphones now nokia started doing producing like this now but the customers are here understood now only if you are fat company what happened you will keep on going like this you will you cannot run take a u turn like the customer so only lean companies can take it now when i say lean like a person one person is fat one person is uh, lean now what decide that fat and lean this eight types of waste stages is type of waste stages is deciding that whether a company is uh, lean or fat now what are the eight waste stages there are eight kinds of waste stages over production we will discuss it later over processing uh, then inventory then uh, uh, then you have defects then uh, motion then uh, waiting transportation etc seven waste stage and there is one more waste stages the eighth waste is called unused talent unused talent so we will discuss all this waste later but let us discuss this unused talent so unused talent means you are not using your brain now when i go for training to people in shop floor and the factories i said that you are not using your brain and then they will challenge me how can you tell that we are not using brain we are coming here daily we are doing lot of work where we need to use brain without brain how can we work now when i say unused talent means use of right brain whatever you are using is left brain you are not using the right brain so not using the right brain the creative brain is also a waste now these are called eight wastages i know try to um, on google it you will come to know these are all eight lean wastages now the aim of lean lean is to reduce the wastages reduce the process wastages these eight kinds of wastages and then make efficient so we will discuss on your creativity all other wastages later now uh, let us understand that lean eliminates wastages now what is the strategy of six sigma six sigma eliminates variation now let's understand variation let's uh, so 
when a company wants to uh, improve they have to first remove the wastages because there will be lot of wastages you have to do the lean activities first and then only you go for six sigma you cannot go for six sigma straight way you have to go, go for lean activities first then reduce the all uh, make the process stabilized and then then you go for reducing the variation now let us understand what is a variation so let's take an example like uh, suppose you are a you know uh, you are in an army you got you are an army officer and if you want to select a commando uh, want to select some people for a commando force now you conduct a shooting test and a physical test from them and suppose a shooting test is conducted there are four people a b c d and the commander conducted the shooting set suppose now this was the result of uh shooter a means the commando a now tell me in terms of accuracy and precision what do you tell about this shooter's performance is he accurate is he precise neither accurate nor precise neither accurate nor precise. neither accurate nor precise so you are aware about that okay now what about this accurate but not precise so this is accurate but not precise so what do you mean by accuracy then hitting close to a target so yes whatever hitting the target. target hitting the target isn't it this is the target all the bullets are in the target now what about this pattern precise, so precise but, not, but, but precise, not accurate not accurate not accurate and what about this pattern Both they are not accurate. Accurate and precise. Precise. Okay. Now my question is, you want to select uh, one person. Whom you will select? The B. B. Okay, very good. Now B. if I want to select one more person, whom will you select? C. It can be B. So B. B. So how many B. people say B? How many people say C? B B option. B option. B B option. B option. Now I will say D. Uh, sorry, C and D. Because if you talk about accuracy and precision, precision is something difficult to achieve. Okay. Now, have you seen this pattern? I will say this person is better than this person. He is consistently repeating the result. Of course, he is shifted from the target. But he is consistently, he has hit a name. What can be the error? Is it a human error or a gun error? Machine error. Do you feel that that person is fault or a machine is fault? So machine. So machine. Maybe <laughs> that person is aiming the same place, but what happened? There is a you know, zeroing error in the gun. And what, wherever he is aiming, but it is going, it is sitting in the other place. So the person is good, isn't it? Maybe the gun is not, uh, gun is a mistake. Maybe this person is as good as D. But, but this machine, that machine that he is using, the gun he was using might be an error, is, you know. So this is more of an op uh, machine error than an operator error. Understood? And precision is something very difficult to achieve. Now, for example, this is something like a student. Today he scored, uh, once he scored a 90 grade, 99 grade, and then he came to 80% grade. Okay, something like that. But here this, see, this is consistent. This person is, whatever is achieving, it is consistent result. Okay. Now, the problem is, he is consistent. Only thing we need to shift him to the center, the main target. So, here there is a lot of variation. Here there are a lot of variation. Here also variation. But here variation is left on as, as, um, less, but it is shifted from the center. Are you clear? Now, let's see, understand. Now, see the different pattern. This is A. Now, what is the pattern? Suppose this is our target. Now we see this, many of his bullet is going out of the targets. We can call it as defects. Now see this, this person is meeting it accurate. But suppose 
a slight variation in his performance is going to create a lot of defects. Now see this, of course he has gone away from the target, but see his, his uh, pattern of the graph. See this, see this, this, this place. Let us understand once again. What is variation? This is the variation, the spread of the data from highest to lowest or the standard deviation. Now the spread, it has highest spread, less spread. Now here the spread is less. But it is shifted from the target. Now this is in the target as well as correct, isn't it? Now these kind of graphs we are going to learn in uh, other phases. So this is called a uh, normal curve. You know, four different types of uh, 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 you know patterns. We will learn it later. So just to understand. Now let us consider this. Take this example of variation and uh, let's compare with this some some manufacturing process. For example. You are producing product. Suppose you are in a soap manufacturing factory, and you have to you are supposed to produce uh, for soaps of some particular particular characteristics, order, then weight, color, etc. Now there are certain specifications, and uh, we will check, inspect it, and what we will do? Anything coming within the specification, we approve it. Anything going uh, uh, the specification, we reject it. Okay. So this is variation. Now, how many, how far this spread is there? The data, data of the, uh, if you are, suppose you are taking the weight of the soap and you have the target that weight should be, you know, for 10 grams plus minus one gram. So how many soaps have gone less than nine grams? How many soaps have gone more than 11 grams, etc.? So you have to check it. So this is called, uh, and then you can find out the variation. So these are all that there are many different uh, specification example. Okay, and uh, we will learn it later. Uh, so uh, accuracy means how close the products are to the center of specification. Precision means ability to repeat the result. Variation is opposite to precision. Please understand. When you are saying high variation, that means less, less precise. When you are having a uh, you know, highly precise, that means you have less variation. You, if you are less precise, that means you have high variation. Okay. Just opposite to, uh, if you are highly precise, that means you have less variation. So statistically, the average, um, uh, this uh, central tendency is denoted as mean and average um, mean. And then Six Sigma spread is denoted as Six Sigma. All this concept we'll learn in the measure phase. So statistically, we can measure because you cannot have every time go and uh, draw a pattern like this. You have to have some statistical quantification of variation and uh, accuracy and precision. So is it clear? So Six Sigma is well, how do you reduce the uh, ability? Uh, sorry, how do you reduce the uh, 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 variation by adopting Six Sigma? Now, what is accuracy? Closeness to the target. Okay. Now, how can you bring, uh, reduce the defects, variation, and correct the process? So, Six Sigma is one way of doing that. Okay. Now, let us understand uh, what is, how we are going to do this. Six Sigma, we know that Six Sigma is one of the strategies. But how are you going to implement this strategy? So how do you do Six Sigma? You know what is that? That when you say implementing Six Sigma, what does it mean? Implementing Six Sigma. So you know that aim of Six Sigma is to achieve 3.4 dpmo or reduce the variation. And when you reduce the variation, that means you are already becoming an accurate, precise. When you are precising, that means you will be achieving more, isn't it? You are achieving to that target 99.99966 percentage. So you have to reduce the variation to be precise. Accurate always, okay. Accurate and precise. So this is same, but how will you achieve the same? So you are going to achieve by a proper management system of organization of Apex Council champions, etc. So when you are when a Six Sigma is implemented in an organization, there is a proper organization structure, and then this there will be teams, and these teams take projects, select problems. Now, this is what somebody said. We select problems and do solve the problems with the bike approach. And we solve the problems 
with the help of demic methodology okay so uh, so let us understand how a project is selected okay so far how so far any any doubt you have any discussions you want to have or you want a five minutes break please let me know no sir all clear everything fine yes sir yes sir can we proceed yes sir yes sir okay right <clears throat> so let us understand how six sigma is implemented now before that let us understand how to organize for six sigma organizing for six sigma problem solving etc now what is six sigma organization means uh, see when a company is uh, uh, implementing six sigma there should be a structure of implementation now how will you do that see one thing you should understand you are engineers the problem with engineers have when i was uh, you know an engineer i have also faced this problem we lack management skills so six sigma also brings you some management skills you have to learn management skills like uh, after you pass out you go for uh, uh, your job or entrepreneurship whatever it may be try to complete your mba or do some management course you should have that management ability what is management you should know so to implement means to manage six sigma you should have a structure an organization structure so a general structure for six sigma implementation is at the top you have an apex council apex council means comprising the top management senior executive ceos etc there will be an apex council who is responsible for bringing the vision and strategically implementing this vision to the downline and they are result, uh, no accountable for six sigma results when they are strategically implementing six sigma they are looking for uh, results they are looking for uh, financial results and then project champion is someone in the, from a senior press and they he becomes a link between the team and the apex council because apex council cannot live, have coordinate with the teams so a senior person should be there who coordinates with the teams and take responsibility approve the project approve the project charter and he removes the bottlenecks and he will give a resource he will approve the project charter and he will give resource and uh, he, uh, any departmental wise problems are there he is there to solve it etc so that is project champion now process owner process owner means process owner is also a senior person for example a planned uh, manager he is responsible for implementing the process change in this area now six sigma team suggested an improvement now how will you uh, who is going to approve that uh, improvement you brought an improvement you said that you do this process change this process and shift this layout etc you suggested but the process owner will approve it now process owner we have to take this process owner since beginning because process owner is someone who is going to approve your process changes then master black belt is a coach he guides the black belts etc then black belts who is expert in uh, statistical analysis who can do a project so in our black belt training we train uh, mini tab and uh, everything and we tell how to how to take a project and do etc now then green belts green belt is uh, lower to uh, a black belt and then the team member or yellow belt whoever it may be this is a general structure of six sigma implementation now these people the team member green belt and black belt they select projects now they have to select projects from their organization and they have to solve that project now what is a project now let's see understand what is a problem projects etc suppose let's take a a working professional or a manager is facing two problems one is one problem from his organization from his uh, uh, home related to home there are a lot of things like education of children going for a vacation and uh, constructing house etc now they, he also has problems at factory now when he has any problem in his for home what he'll do you can take combine the, the you know discuss with the family and take decision but what about the problems at factory can he take a decision he has to a lot of problems like machine breakdowns rejections customer complaints so you cannot solve a pro problem like this you have you have to 
solve their problems within a structured manner. So here the problem solving is simple. Here the problem solving is difficult. There should be a structured way of problem solving. Now, what is the structured way of problem solving? When you have a problem in your organization, what you can do, you can roughly work out the problem. What is that problem? And then uh, what is the impact of problem, etc. And then you, you know, uh, propose it that we can take it as a project. We can solve this problem. We can take it as a project, etc. Now, all these steps, we can call it as defined phase. So the defined phase of Six Sigma is nothing but identifying an improvement opportunity and uh, identifying a problem. And uh, a problem is nothing but an opportunity also. Then you are systematically, uh, you are trying to define that pro project properly. What is that project, etc. And then you are trying to solve that problem. Now, how will you solve? Once you get a formal approval from the process champion, okay, go ahead with the project. Then you will do a lot of things. Now you will analyze, brainstorm, what is the what are the reasons for that problem? What are the root cause of the problem, etc. You will brainstorm, then you will collect the data. You will uh, try to see what type of what is the type of data, etc. And then all these steps we can call it as measure phase. Then after collecting data, you will go for analysis and improve. And then after improving the suggestions, putting a new suggestions, improvements, etc. Then you have to think about uh, maintaining that, controlling that. Okay, controlling the uh, result, controlling the benefit, maintaining the benefit. So this is called the control phase. Now this is the mic is all about. Now in the defined phase, let us see what are the things that we need uh, in the defined phase. So before that, let us understand some some kind of uh, vocabulary in Six Sigma. Like what is a process? Process is a set of interrelated activities that produce a result or an output. You will learn about the process later. Customer, anyone who receives product, service, or information is called as customer. Now, customer can be internal customer or external customer. Who is internal customer? Yes. Logistic from one department yes. to another department. Very good, very good. One department to another department. Now, tell me, for IACHC, who are the customers? Student. Students are the customer, isn't it? Now, for as who are the internal customers? The supervisors of the lecture. The lecture. Like uh, admin people in admin department. Uh, now, you know, admin department, the faculty, that uh, team of faculty, and there are admin department, HR department. Now. Uh, it's for HR, the faculty is a customer, internal customer, isn't it? So for internal customer means someone who is from the organization who is going to you know, process one process uh, output and input, uh, all these things, uh, internal customers will receive the input and uh, produce it and give to another internal customers, etc. So in Six Sigma, we are not talking about external customers only. We are also talking about uh, internal customers. Okay, then output output can be service, product, or information, anything. Then inputs the material that is going to a process. Then supplier, the someone who is going to uh, produce it. Now, if you arrange these words, suppose you take at suppliers, then input, then you take process, then you talk output and customer. So this is the sequence, isn't it? You get things from supplier. The supplier gives you inputs. That input is processed to an output, and this output is going to a customer. Now, what do you call this? This is called SIPOC. So in uh, Six Sigma, we will see what is SIPOC, what, who are the suppliers, who are, what, is the input, what are the inputs, what are the processes, etc. In SIPOC, we will learn it. So SIPOC is nothing but a supplier input process output control. And then output requirements, we will uh, learn this output requirements, etc. in measure phase in detail. And uh, input requirements also we will discuss in uh, measure phase. Okay, a set of interrelated activities that produces a result or output is called as? Process. 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 Okay, now uh, DFSS. DFSS is also an another methodology. Now DFSS is for 
designing new products or process or service okay so uh, if any organization want to design a new process system etc they can use dfss methodology but most of the time six sigma we are using dmic methodology okay so dfss is also known as dma dv define measure analyze design verify approach there are a lot of other methodologies also dmss dfss method we'll learn later so dfss is also like that uh, it can benefit organization by completely understanding customers and stakeholders requirement launch project on time and budget etc so these are all simple theoretical things this these are there in your uh, in your uh, uh, we are going to provide you a handbook so in the handbook it is there already okay now there are different tools for dfss like uft then uh, 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 kana model etc all these things uh, by analysis of various hypothesis testing etc are discussed in black belt and green green belt projects uh, box plot uh, we will discuss uh, okay then uh, correlation and regression etc uh, i have tried to give some some uh, i have tried to take this kind of uh, you know black belt concepts also in during the uh, training last time but please go through the uh, video lectures you will learn it then uh, design of experiments again a black belt project so this is about dfss so dfss like define and dfss also it's like that we have to in the define phase means you are initiating a project suppose we are developing a new product so we'll initiate what is the project then we will see what are the requirements of customer etc then convert it into specific uh, measurable parameters design parameter then we will analyze then we will design and verify so this is again steps for structured methodology for dmadv Six Sigma design team should follow which one of the below? Which one of the below as a methodology? DMI. DMI. Who says DMI? So we are talking about Six Sigma design. DFS. So design team means it is DFS. Okay. Right. Now we will uh, uh, go to the next uh, concepts. Just a minute. Okay, any doubt so far? Anything you need clarification, discussion, etc.? Any doubt? Any Post more explanation required? Is it everything everything clear to you? Sir, in DFSS process, the hmm. last to, sir, what does, does it mean by verify? We are designing, then verifying. What are we verifying? That the product we have designed, the machine we have designed. Mm -hmm. So my question okay. is, what does we verify in the last part? Okay. Now there are two things called uh, verify and validate. Okay, now there are these, are, these are inputs, uh, in design, then we design, and then design output. So we call it design input and design and design output. Okay. Now design input means what are, what are the things that your customer needs? Customer will tell you the design input needs. Okay. Then the design team will design it and there will be a design output. Now the design output can be design output can be a, a drawing, a prototype whatever it may be understood so when you when you are, suppose you are uh, designing a smartphone or a smartwatch now a lot of customer demanded okay there should be these features that features etc customer will be tell you a lot of uh, requirements for them 
and then you collect all this customer requirement and then you uh, design it and now the design means you are making a, a prototype or a, a design drawing now verification is you are verifying whether that design output is aligned with the design input you are verifying that all those design inputs are there in the design output now validation means once you make the product then whether the functionality this is only design output maybe the drawing you will check all that all the requirements are there etc but validation means when you make the actual product and all the user requirements have been fulfilled by the product etc so there are two things validate verify validate sometimes People uh, use verify and validate as one, but there is difference between verify and validate. So it's basically done for, <coughs> sir, it's, ba it's basically done for optimization. Uh, yes, not optimization. Optimization comes later, but at least your design output have all those inputs required by the customer. Optimization comes later part. When you make the uh, no product, etc. Because uh, now this design output may be a drawing. So you just see that whether all those things are there in the design output. Sometime a prototype. So just verify whether the inputs, design inputs we have planned is there in your design outputs or not. That is where, where, you know, verification. Verification is a process of design process. It's a step. Okay, there are a lot of steps, so that is what we are going to verify. Okay, sir. Yes. Any other doubt? Any more question? Please have discussions. If you have any doubt about uh, Six Sigma, so far we have discussed. So, shall we proceed? Shall I proceed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Now, I said that we have the DMIC methodology. Now, we are in the defined phase now. So, the introduction of Six Sigma, you understood what is Six Sigma, origins, etc. Now, we also understood what is defined methodology, etc. Now, let us understand what is defined specifically. Now, what is that? What is Six Sigma? Implementing Six Sigma is nothing but implementing the projects. Implement the projects. Now, what is a project? Yes, tell me. What is a project? What do you understand by a project? Do you know production, difference between production and project? project may be the paperwork and production is on ground which we produce through that paperwork the drawing which we had made mm -hmm. we have to produce it on the ground through the machines the project is the paperwork and uh, in which we put just the values and in product we get the output in real okay now project uh, is can not we see, a, yeah yeah tell me can, yes can we say that uh, production is a part of project uh no now suppose uh, let's say uh, now uh, production means something continuous okay production uh, is on a continuous basis now project is one time this is the major difference between the production and project okay now suppose uh, for you what is that is continually happening in your in, in your case as a student the studies isn't it the classes always ongoing classes ongoing studies etc but what about this this one this training is it going to be a continuous thing it's a one time isn't it project it's a kind of project Project. Now people are there to kind of arrange that is there. Okay, now uh, the, this is completed. Now again another batch will come and another project will start. Okay, so similarly uh, in organizations we have suppose a new product development. Suppose 
uh, a company want to develop a new product now that is a project once that product is developed then what will happen they will transfer this to production department then then regular production happens now project is something one time project is not a repeated time now project can be repeated now there is a continuous project happening in your organization like this six sigma again one batch is over the some other batch will come okay so the project or npd one one product developed again the team is engaged in next product so project once that product is finished that project is finished then you will take another project so project is something ongoing but at the same time project has you know the it's one time like one one thing it is done and that is over now you are going to take something new but production you are doing the same production continuously so this is the difference between the production and the project now production is as said there are two things like uh, uh, maintain and improve isn't it we discussed maintain and improve now out of this where is production and where is project maintain is the... maintain the production and improve the project very good so you yes. understood so what happened here the maintain production is about all maintenance improve is about projects now this is what i said that you will get lot of people here that is why i always tell the students go for a certification because people are or mncs are looking for people who can improve who can take projects because project cannot be done this when you go to an organization this will they will train you but here there is no training here you have to train yourself you have to get certified yourself as part of your own improvement so that is what makes value six sigma certification gives value because you are a person who can bring improvements now maintain production is about maintenance you it is continuous process project is something now but people will take one project complete it take another project complete it save save cost and then keep on doing it now a six sigma black belt used to take at least four projects in a year apart from this that is why people will pay you more because you are not only doing this maintenance activity but you are also in saving cost to company that is why six sigma people are paid higher certified people getting more payment so they they keep on doing the they will be part of the project they will be maintaining at the same time they will be involved in the project also so the project what do you mean by project in six sigma now project you can have many project like for an example there can be a big project capital intensive project for example if you see last six years lot of matlab developments of roads i know that uh, i travel from uh, chandigarh to uh, jalandhar etc before six years back it used to take six hours five hours six hours to reach a place but now i can reach in 3 three, 3 three hours my travel time has cut short, cut short a lot of travel of infrastructure for national highways we should really appreciate the minister gadkari really i am experiencing it that's why i am telling this so what is that that's a project now how well that project is being managed before that this project used to take lot of time seven years eight years i have seen that uh, on the way i can see this building projects this road projects lying you know uh, unfinished but last six, six years how fast this projects have been completed still we can complete even more faster compared to other countries but still we are much 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 better now so what is project project can be a big project now uh, a project like uh, uh, around 5 uh, uh, kilometers flyover from chandigarh to uh, you know punjab that uh, uh, karar area it took around 2 years completed it so it was a big project a capital intensive project so similarly an organization if you see that organization an organization may have big projects capital intensive project where they put lot of money for example they are creating a new factory in baddi himachal or maybe maharashtra so when you create new factories 
when you uh, make a, buy a new machine uh, build a new line product line uh, etc so all this becomes a project now that project is different because that there are a lot of project management techniques involved in that but six sigma projects what is a six sigma project six sigma project is done by six sigma certified trained people they do it their own they don't require anybody's guidance only they need their project process champion approve their project they know how to analyze etc so six sigma projects are nothing but a problem assigned to a team understood a problem assigned to a team now let us understand what is problem how you have to identify a problem etc so in the defined phase what are the things we are doing is we are going to do three things mainly we are going to do the project charter then we are going to determine the ctqs now ctq part we will learn it in the uh, measure phase in detail then we are going to create a cipoc cipoc also you learn what is cipoc supply input, supply input process output control yes cannot control customer so there are three things defined phase means these are the steps we have to do in a defined phase make a project charter in the project charter what are the things you have you will have a business case problem statement mission statement project scope team selection project schedule etc suppose you are doing a project now you have identified a problem and then you you are ready that you are going to improve that you are going to solve that problem now you have to make a charter that tells what is that problem in a statement you will tell what is that problem and then you will get it approved it then you will identify what is that you are going to improve that is what is ctq now we are going to discuss now business case and all we will not discuss business cases uh, when you discuss this problem and mission statement you will understand business case also but now let us understand what is a problem statement this is very very important understanding the problem statement so project selection is uh, i know we will we'll, we'll come to know how to take this projection uh, pro projects etc selecting the right step this is the right steps for selecting the right project brainstorming the problem suppose uh, you are going you are doing a project in your organization in your department you want to take a pro problem or select an opportunity select a project what you have to do is suppose you have five people have a brainstorming suppose they said uh, two problems each you got 10 problems isn't it but which problem you will select because not all problem will give you benefits when you are doing a project you should see what is that benefit that you are going to get in for the organization so you have 10 projects then you have to select one then when you are selecting one project means how will you select what are the criteria so you can one criteria is making in a money term converting that problem into a money term you will understand what is that then prioritize based on the money impact then make a ppi project priority index and select now most of the time people don't use this ppi but if somebody wants to use we can use it most of the time here itself we will select the project just by impact money in that. But suppose in a big organization, if you want to make a project priority index, there is a calculation, very simple calculation. It says what is the going to be the saving by doing that project? How much cost we have to put for that project? What is the time to complete? And what is the probability of success? Suppose I have 60% chance of succeeding that project, 70% chance, etc and you get some saving so just saving divided by cost into probability by divide by time so you will be this there in your handbook it is very simple calculation you can go through there is an example also you can go through it okay no need to discuss all these things but please know that project with the higher ppi we are going to select so six sigma project is selected on the basis of Higher PPI. Higher PPI. So just just go through that uh, go through that handbook. It's very simple. You can uh, with an example it is given. Okay. Now let's understand how to make it prepare a project charter. Now before that project charter we understood that we have this much thing business case problem statement mission statement etc. But let us understand the problem statement first. Now before that let us understand what is problem what is pain. Now, problem is a repeated and visible performance deficiency in manufacturing, service process, etc. It is referred to as a pain area and should be considered as an opportunity for improvement. Yesterday, I was conducting this problem statement analysis for the working professionals. 
now different different uh, organization now some one company one person was facing a problem like uh, their customer volume customer volume reduced to half order volume customer used to order some uh, uh, no uh, 30 crores order now all of a sudden they have reduced to 15 crores the order volume of customer reduced okay now that is a pain for them now similarly many people will have many pain like maybe defect may be one pain rework may be a pain they are not meeting the delivery may be a pain suppose if i ask you now suppose uh, uh, if i ask him anshu what is the problem that he is facing while conducting this uh, this uh, oip program imanshu is there imanshu are you there uh, yes sir yeah imanshu can you tell me when you are conducting this oip what are the problems normally you face problems or pain can you just explain maybe maybe people are not uh, you know enrolling on time that can be one reason maybe yes sir. It? some of the students are now joining that uh, lectures at the time yes now see i have asked just imanshu to brainstorm now if i ask another two minutes imanshu can give five ten problems in this area that is what is the area now imanshu is maintaining that activities isn't it he is maintaining that during the maintenance activity he is facing a lot of problems because he is not able to do it efficiently why because people are then now we, he has a lot of problems for that similarly if i ask any student now what is the problem that you face in your studies you can give a lot of problems isn't it you can give 100 problems am i right yes sir yes sir <laughs> So yes, tell me one or two problems that you face in your uh, in your day to day activities. Internet connection, weak yes. internet connection. Yes, internet connection is one thing. Time management. Time management. But all what are these? All this is it uh, problems or pains or is there, are they symptoms? internet connection is actually a symptom for some other problem isn't it now your problem may be i can say if you see this you have a target isn't it suppose you kept a target of uh, you are finishing you are going to finish this uh, btec um, uh, be or btec in with a, a 90% grade or 95% grade whatever it may be you have kept now for that you are you know to be consistent and you are you are not able to meet that consistently now that is going to be a pain for you isn't it now suppose you if you go through last three two semesters you can say last two semesters you are not able to meet that so the pains are there very very people like we asked himanshu himanshu brainstorm a lot of problems and i asked you what about the problems of studies you also have a lot of problems but when you are defining these problems, you need to define it in a proper way. So the pain will become a problem statement only when you answer it like uh, when has it occurred like during the last six months or past two years, what is the problem in numerical terms, what is the problem, uh, what is the impact of problem in money terms, as well as these three things should be there at the same time, you should not blame or give solution in a problem statement. So when you are selecting a problem and making a problem statement to put it in a project charter, please take care that three things should be there in your problem statement. And these two things, last two things should not be there, like blame or solution. Now let's just take an example of a problem statement. The payment from our customers are always uh, late because they're dissatisfied with our delivery, delivery due to production delay. Now tell me, is this a good problem statement or a pro uh, bad problem statement or is this a problem statement is it a problem or a pain yes what do you think is this a good problem statement no sir blame no, is sir. there yes blame is there then what else What are the other other things in your this problem, uh, this statement? 
is there any quantification of no, the problem no if i suppose somebody somebody come with say, now please take care of this please take care this is not only helpful for six sigma this is helpful for your complete career whenever you are telling bringing some problem or some opportunity ideas to top management to your senior please be specific because there are only two languages in organization only two languages one is language of money and another is language of benefits now your top management their language is money whatever whenever you want to convince anything to your top management convince them with the language of money and if you want to convince your juniors convince them with benefits please take this note this will help you in your career so try to have and put all quantification don't take like this you know when you when you tell like this to your top management I mean, such kind of problem they will tell that they are what is this what is the problem i am not understanding so this problem statement do not have a quantitative terms of problem impact of problem in many terms etc so as well as blame and solution etc is also now can anyone convert this into a good problem statement hypothetically you can use your own idea can anyone hypothetically convert this into a good problem statement anybody please try okay now let me give that example see let us rewrite it for example see for the last 10 months 70 percent of the customers that means i have taken the data of last 10 months then i found that 70 percent of our customers are paying bill late by 35 days so what is my pain here late payment now late payment is my pain but this pain now become a problem statement because i have done all three things here what is the last now what is that what is what is that uh, last month uh, uh, when uh, how do you collect the data for this problem statement i have collected data of last 10 months and i found that 70 percent of the customers are paying the bill late by 35 days and this is making an impact of almost 57 lakhs per year now tell me which statement do you like the first statement or the last statement last one so is it clear now somebody is coming to you like this will you like to hear from him yes sir. no like this first one no sir. No, sir. No, sir. no sir no sir so same as with your seniors your top management when you are going to them whenever please take this whenever you are discussing especially if there is a meeting and all if you want to take attendance of your senior people try to put them data try to put them money immediately they will listen to you they will stop they will look at you whenever you are putting especially if you are putting the money where money thing in that they will immediately look at you but be specific and be you know you should have a backup data don't just bluff you should have the backup data and uh, have that confidence okay understood so take care of this please do this okay it's for your uh, you know uh, you will be benefited for this okay right now let me take one more example customer complaints are at increase due to payment card uh, due to quality department it causes higher warranty cost etc can you rewrite this now Can you rewrite? Who can rewrite this? Yes. See the example, previous time example. Look at it. Three things. What, when, when, last 10 months. What, what is that? 
70 percent customer delayed gets billing late by 35 days and what is the impact three things what when what and the impact yeah please try please try so from since past, past five months mm. customer complaints have been increased by 30 percent uh, due to mm. the quality department and it has cost the company 60 lakhs very good very good but uh, uh, you should not put that due to don't put the blame okay otherwise it's correct yeah yeah so Understood? instead of uh, instead of payment we can write which has reduced the customers of our company to five percent or two percent absolutely you can do that also you can do that also either uh, uh, you can make that uh, uh, impact in money terms or impact in any other terms you can make okay but you should give impact impact in quantifying not like just words just uh, beating around the bush now just be very very specific what is that okay and then we have so is it clear to you yes sir yes so yes. problem statement clear to you so this is very very important and in your uh, career also it's going to help you please be very specific what is that you are going to speak to your uh, top management etc okay clear so this is uh, not only for six sigma it's useful for your complete career okay now next is mission statement now mission statement means once you decided what is that project you have to take now you have to take a uh, goal that what is that I am going to improve? I am going to improve uh, this, uh, uh, you know, I am going to improve the delay in uh, customer uh, uh, payment. And then I am going to delay, reduce the customer complaint, etc. So you should keep a goal. That what is that goal you are going to achieve with the that project? Now, please take care that the goal should be challenging goal. So this is also one thing that Japanese managers believe. Japanese managers say that what is management? They say that today you have a problem and tomorrow you remove that problem to zero. That is what is management. They believe that you have a problem and you remove the problem. That is that is the role of managers. That's what they say. But, but our culture is today we have, then we say, okay, I have reduced this is one then i reduce i reduce then i reduce like this and it is never going to remove so this is the thinking difference between uh, our thinking and japanese thinking they just believe okay you have a problem remove the problem that is what their their efficiency is that the government officials the private agencies everyone is like that the complete country has that culture so the second thing is mission statement now then then you have problem and mission statement. Uh, they are uh, mass pairs. Both are important because when you are going to, the team is getting, uh, when, you, when you are selecting a, a Six Sigma project, your team should know what is that project that we are going to solve? What is that problem we are going to solve? What is the target to be achieved? Unless we are not clear about this, there is no improvement. There is no problem solving. There is only confusion. So what are the things that you have to take care? Please uh, do not provide solution. In the problem statement, do not provide solution. Why? What is the reason? Why do we say that we do not provide solution? You are there or because you left? It is not so because an if we have such, why haven't we acted upon them? Uh, yes, almost right. Like, like. If you have a solution, then that is, it is not a problem at all. Go and solve it. If you have a solution, then why are you taking it as a project? Project we are taking, which we don't have a solution and we are not uh, identified the solution properly. If you have, if you know what your solution very clearly, then don't take it as a project. Yesterday when I was discussing that, some people said that we are going to make a software. Can I take it as a project? No, because you already have the solution. So if software is a solution, you are making that solution. Then that project is over. Implement your solution. The project we are taking only when where we don't have solution. We don't know what is that problem, what are the root cause, etc. Okay. 
so you should not assign blame don't give solution do not combine several problems into one this is also important don't do not combine don't combine several problems into one problem statement yesterday again while we were discussing that people said that one person said in sale paper sale person said that they have a problem with the transportation with all our uh, transport all over then they have a lead to conversion problem then they have some uh, uh, value customer value problem so they were trying to combine all things now you cannot combine all three things you have to be very clear what is that you are going to solve okay right reproduce below the problem statement on an enterprise 10 percent of the products are getting failed in the final stage of testing which impacts highly to our company identify the missing part of the as per the good problem statement criteria three options no impact of the money and the impact of problem in money term is not indicated option Very good. okay so you are clear right so now let's discuss about project scopes and constraint now project scope means uh, we will see what is the scope now how where do you find the scope now i said sipoc isn't it sipoc supplier input process output customers now sipoc will give you a scope what are who are your suppliers whether suppliers are internal or external like yesterday that uh, during the training that one person said that they have a problem with uh, yes same that business customer volume problem their customer volume order volume reduced now they are going to take it as a project now this project they are going to take now they are going to involve the suppliers customers external customers so their scope increased isn't it their customer they they have uh, customers in that similarly suppliers if you are taking a project you will see well, who are the suppliers whether it is internal supplier external supplier different department if it is same com same company located at different places sipog will tell you the scope of the project constraint you have to see what are the project constraints etc any special constraints you have etc we can define boundaries uh, etc in the scope you will define very clear then selecting the project team project team should be very good team that you are, but the selection of team also depends upon the uh, no, the success of project depends upon the selection of team what team you are, you are selecting okay and then project plan we have uh, we can use gantt chart for project plan we can have a plan like uh, uh, what is the uh, defined phase when you are going to finish the defined phase measure phase what how much time you are going to take for define measure analyze improve etc proper plan you have to plan it very well these are all the project management concepts now understanding customer requirements will not take it it is uh, ctq ctq we will discuss in the measure phase and uh, i think uh, for today it's uh, this is enough let us see if uh, sipoc is there we will just discuss the sipoc part only now okay sipoc supplier input process output so sipoc suppose uh, for an example let's take let's uh, let's consider that uh, uh, you are taking a project in a pizza shop now uh, that pizza pizza uh, shop uh, that is located in a town and uh, uh, you can order either by phone or etc so let us do a sipoc for that so who are all the suppliers of that pizza shop the raw materials company yeah maybe the base supplier isn't it someone who is supplying the base someone who is supplying the vegetables isn't it all, all these things yeah isn't it all these things can be part of the supplier and we have internals like material store planning department etc these can also be internal supplier now what are the inputs what are the inputs raw materials and manpower yes you have raw material like base pizza base uh, vegetables toppings then you have the, the the delivery boys also a kind of input those who are going to you know give that um, deliver that etc etc information etc all these things are 
input. Now the process is like you get an order, you order to cook and assemble the pizza, bake, pack, delivery and collect the payment. This is the uh, process. Now output is, what is the output? Tasty pizza as per the customer, as per the order and the customers, the customers can be the students from the local, same locality, executives, etc. Isn't it? Now when you are doing this Six Sigma project in this, you know that these are my scope project scope who are all the suppliers now there is suppliers so if i want to involve these suppliers i have to take care then process what are the step process steps that i have to take care etc and who are going to be the customers so this is all about sipoc chart understood now define phase we have completed uh, we have discussed about define phase c these are the things in the define phase isn't it ctq will take later We'll take the city data. So in the defined phase, we are we are <clears throat> we are doing the defined phase. We are identifying a project, proper project, a problem, and uh, converting into a problem statement, converting into money terms, and then you have like initially problems of project selection. Also, we identified now in the project selection, you have uh, uh, ten problems out of ten. Which one you will select? If you make a problem statement, if you see the what is the impact of money terms. Then you can straightway select one, which is having, which is going to save you a lot. Okay. So once you select it, you will make a project charter. In the project charter, you will have problem statement, mission statement, project scope, team selection, who are all in the team, then uh, the project schedule, etc. So these are the things we will do in the defined phase. Then after this, we will identify what is a CTQ. The CTQ also will put it in the project charter. Now identifying CTQ means what is CTQ uh, we learn in measure phase. CTQ means what is that you are going to improve. Suppose you are taking a project uh, of uh, uh, rework, then your CTQ is rework. Okay. So we will learn it, and then last is CPOC, identifying the CPOC, etc. So that's all about the defined phase, and we'll uh, next week you can cover. We'll start with the measure phase. So we can have discussion in whatever we have learned now, doubts, discussion, etc. So another 15 minutes, we can have that. Yes. So the business case and the statement are the same. OK, we'll discuss that business case also. So business case means normally <clears throat> uh, problem statement we will have only three things, isn't it? Problem statement will we will have only three things like uh, when has it occurred, what is the problem in numerical term and what is the impact. But sometimes your top management also needs to know why we, we need to do this all these things like business cases, business case will involve include a problem statement. But it provides a broad definition also. Now it says that uh, it provides a rationale, a reason for why this project is, should be taken now. And uh, links project to strategic priorities because your project champion means your process owners. When you take a project, that means four or five months you are going to involve in that project. Your time is suitable. You have to take time. You are going to take at least two, two hours per day for that project. Then you will be doing that uh, data analysis, you have to identify and you have to present it, you have to make presentation, etc. So you have to do a lot of, you need to, uh, you know, you are going to put time on that. That means your process owner should know that if he is allowing you to do all these activities, that means there should be some benefits. Why are you going to do this project? So business case will explain, give an explanation of that. It will be, it is elaborating your problem statement. Whatever not in there in the problem statement, you tell. And typically you can say how the project is driving the business goal because Six Sigma project, you should drive the business goals in Six Sigma project. Okay. And uh, how will this project impact the customer, etc. What is, why is it important to do the project, etc. should be written in the business case. So that is what is business case. So it will have more than the problem statement. For example, our cutting process not me now. This is a business case for a project. Our part cutting process is not meeting the target yield of 99%. Now this is part of problem statement, isn't it? 
Now, apart from that, we also said this is causing floor phase, shipment and resource problems, etc. Now, project on increasing the yield will drive towards our business goal of enhancing process, process deficiency. Now, he has explained it, why we should do it. It is important to do this because we, need, we are losing the competitive advantage. And then what is the impact? What is the benefit? Now, that means this is also there in the problem statement. So whatever things are there in the problem statement, plus some extra explanation is the business case. Is it clear? Yes. Sir. Yes. What else? Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, in this second problem statement example, uh, uh, why didn't we use uh, the quality department in this statement? Which one you are talking about? the next statement okay 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 right yes sir this one huh. uh, sir why didn't we use uh, the quality department reason because if we are going to approach to our seniors they might uh, want to know what is the reason behind the problem now in the problem statement we said that we should not blame we should not give solution. We should not give any idea. Why? Because when you give an idea or things that you are biased, because you have not done any data analysis, you have to do the data analysis in measure phase only. Before doing any data analysis, any kind of uh, analysis, how can you blame the quality department? So if you are very clear quality department, then don't take it as a project straightway implemented okay so you until unless you don't analyze the problem until unless you don't analyze the problem with the help of data do not put what is the reason reasons have to be analyzed with the help of data only okay sir thank you sir yes what else? Any other doubts? Any discussion you need more? Any clarification? So you remember this, what are the things we have discussed? Now, what is Six Sigma? If someone asks, what is Six Sigma, what will you say? A process of, or methodology in hmm. which we can have a metric of 3.4 DPMO, hmm. whichever process we are applying Six Sigma. Right. OK. You can say that as a metric, Six Sigma is 3.4 DPMO. As a methodology, Six Sigma is a problem solving methodology like DMIC and DFSS. And Six Sigma is also a set of tools, you know, where we have used a lot of tools in different phases to solve the problems, isn't it? So overall, you can give a explanation about Six Sigma. Yes. So this uh, 3.4 DPMO is not a fixed quantity, isn't it? Uh, it's a fixed one. OK. How so do you arrive at 3.4? It's a statistical way. It's not a just uh, you know uh, intuition. It is derived by with a proper statistical uh, you know uh, inference. So, but sir, uh, how can we make sure that uh, only 3.5, uh, 3.4 will be the uh, we will get the defects of 3.4 dpm in a process? So, for that, you need to know what is dpmo. We are going to learn DPMO in measure phase, the calculation of DPMO. So in the calculation of DPMO, we will learn it. 
defects per opportunity what is defects per unit what is defects per opportunity what is defects per million opportunity all these things we will learn it okay and how okay, six sigma sir. defined that uh, it is now you know uh 3.4 defects per million opportunities isn't it yes sir okay now this is a practical measure you know what is the theoretical measure of six sigma theoretically what is the accuracy now this is 3.4 in million opportunities now theoretically six sigma is two parts per billion what is billion what is billion 10 crores 10 crores is it 10 or 100 10 crores the 10 crores it is 10 sir 1000 1000 1000 they say million and 1000 million is a billion billion now 1000 billion means 100 crores a billion means 100 crores okay now only two parts going defective in 100 crores of production can you imagine what is the accuracy you can even even uh, we cannot believe it this is the theoretical now from this theoretical how we have raised to this practical because it is said that the process is never going to be sended there is always going to be a shift in the long term process is going to shift 1.5 standard deviations 1.5 sigma shift is going to happen in the process in the long term at both side so when you have the both side 1.5 sigma shift that means instead of 6 sigma it becomes 4.5 sigma so considering this this is the practical one isn't it this is what is going to happen in practical there is going to be a shift in the process so if you consider the shift practically it becomes 3.4 but theoretically it is two parts per billion understood we'll learn it in dpm measure phase okay sir right what else any more doubt any more clarification yes sir Sir, for applying for a green belt, do we need certain qualification or certain criteria? No need actually, because green belt also taking from the basic. That's what I said. There was no yellow belt at all. Green belt, of course, for black belt, at least you have to cover green belt. So green belt, there is no criteria. You can, uh, you should uh, understand. Uh, earlier we have kept that uh, uh, like uh, criteria, like you should have at least one year, two year experience. But uh, we have removed that criteria for uh, BTEC and B students because these people are already involved with the industries. They know the industry. They are having, uh, you know, uh, uh, interaction with the industries. So they are like getting an experience of one year. So you already know many of the concept and uh, now things have changed 10 years back what is available and uh, information available to you and now what are the information available to you you get every information if you want to start a company you can start that much of information is there in the internet so you are already aware of what things so the level has increased that's why i am covering many of the black belt also concept some of your in your uh, yellow belts some things which I not cover for the working professional, but as a student, you know better than uh, no better concepts. You are already aware statistics and all. You are already aware. You can learn it easily. Understood? Yes, sir, yes. 
so we can stop then now is there any doubt anybody have any doubts no sir, sir i think no one have any doubt so we can stop so we can stop here so next week we will start with the pressure phase in between for more uh, uh, things they want imanshu you can share that previous links also to them okay sir and the uh, handbook also okay sir a handbook will be a same this or same same or same, same handbook same same handbook you send the same handbook only because most of the things which they can read and understand and in our previous links are also there so yes. it's uh, it's easy to understand things i have explained everything no need to explain every time the same thing no once we have we should see the you know time shift also so we have already have the things uh, in a, as good as a live session so let us utilize that isn't it okay so please give them the recording the recorded lecture but give the recorded lecture one by one like uh, define phase give them the define phase lecture okay thank you so that, so that when they come for the next batch next um, uh, sunday they are clear with many of the concepts okay yes sir okay yes thank sir you. yes sir right thank you thank, thank you sir okay okay thank you sir Thank you sir. Thank you sir. Thank you sir. Thank you thank you thank you.